In this video, I'm going to have a look at the eighth index law and a proof of why it works. So the eighth index law states that if we have a fractional index such as a to the m on n, then we can rewrite this as a third of the nth root of a to the power of m. Or we can also write it as the nth root of a and all of that to the power of m. So we, if we have a fractional index, it's the denominator as our root value, and then we have our number to the power of the numerator. So now let's have a look at why this works. So we can have a look at something such as say like x squared. And if we take the square root of x squared, the square root of a squared number is just what you started with. The same also applies, say, if we have x cubed. We can take the cubed root of a cubed number and end up again back where we started. We can also have a look at this from the point of view of the third index law. So now if I have a look, say, at x squared and raise it to the power of one half. Now, that means the fact that if we use the third index law, the two powers are multiplied, so I'd have x to the power of 2 times 1 half, which is x to the power of 1, because 2 times 1 half is 1, which is just x. So that, that, basic, that means the fact that if I have something raised to a power, it's going to be the same as square rooting it, because of the fact that x squared to the, um, to the power of 1 half gave me x, and x squared square rooted gave me x. So these ended up being the same down here. We can also do the same for the cubed version. So I can take, say, um, x cubed and raise it to the power of one third, and that gives me x is to the power of three times one third, which gives me x to the one, which is just x. So these two also came out the same. So that proves the fact that if I have a number raised to one over n, I get the nth root of that number. But that doesn't prove the bit to do with m. That's just half the proof. So I can also have a look at that situation of a to the m on n. So we've already shown the fact that the on n bit works. Now we're looking for the m bit. So if I have a look at this, I can rewrite this again using the third rule that this is a to the m times 1 over n, which is a to the m to the power of 1 over n. And I've already shown the fact that anything to the power of 1 over n is the nth root. So that gives me the nth root of a to the m, which was this part of the rule all the way up there. So where do we get this part from, this part here? So that part comes from the fact that if I have a slightly different play with this. So I'm going to start off again with a to the m over n and rewrite it this time as 1 over n times m. And that just gives me a switch around with this is a over 1 over n to the power of m. So a to the 1 over n we've shown is a to the nth root, and then that is raised to the power of m. So that gives us that second part of the proof of the rule. So it takes a bit to prove why this works, and it takes a little bit of um, extrapolation of the theorem based on square rooting, well, rooting on the value of the same to the squared, or to the same of the power, so square root of x squared or cube root of x cubed, or say x to the n to the nth root should just give me x by extension of these two. And then by playing around with the third index law, we can prove that the eighth index law actually works.